I saw an article that there's an underwear company that wants to pay someone $500 to sit around their house and test out their underwear, which is what most of us have been doing for the last six months, I thought. I don't know why. <laughs> it got me thinking, uh, I sell underwear, and it's very comfortable, I know that, but I've never officially tested it out, so today I'm gonna change that. Andy, uh, you're wearing a pair today, aren't you? I wear them every day, Ellen. Can I see? Thank you. <laughs> They're real, real high up. I'd like you to twerk. Yeah. You know how to twerk? No, I Put don't. Put your back into it. There you go. Nope, 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 nope. That's like you're, know. that's uh, like you're uh, pumping uh, up a yeah. tire. Put your hands Put on your knees. Put your hands knees. on your knees. Now, now move your butt up Just and down. Just your move. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Like a forward back motion. Forward back up. motion. Up. Like. Up. There you go, yeah. thrust your pelvis. Like go, that. go, kind go. Of, oh, go. Wow. Faster, faster, wow. faster, faster. Much faster. faster. Just your pelvis. Just your pelvis. Go. Just the butt. Just the pelvis. Just the butt. There you go. Yes. Yes. You're always dancing when you come out here. Yeah. I haven't changed a bit, Ellen. No. Haven't changed it at all. Thanks for being so here. Happy. Thank you, my first in-studio appearance, and I haven't changed a bit. No, no, you look you look great, you look good as ever. So casual with the shorts on today. Do you wear shorts a lot? Yeah, just, I just want to try a new thing. It's 2020, and uh, just yeah. want to change things up a bit. All right, it's interesting, because you said you haven't changed a bit, and yet you're changing things up, but that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> You almost didn't go into the bubble, and what changed your mind? Um, my grandpa. Uh, my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer um, just right before they were talking about getting ready to go into the bubble. When we had the conversation, he didn't necessarily want to, to start his chemo. He was just going to come to terms. He's like the toughest guy I've ever met, by the way. Like, I, I got like, to gotta introduce him. He's like a superhero. He's had a heart attack, cancer. COVID all at the same time and has beat it all. Wow. Um, but. <laughs> so let's uh, let's give him a shout out. What's his name? The Great Will Be is what they call and, him. And he wasn't going to keep fighting after all that? Yeah, he just said he was done. He said he was tired. And how I convinced him was like, I'm going to go down there and play. And But you got to play too. And How's I, he doing? He's doing good now. Good, good. He's doing great. That's fantastic. Because you are comfortable talking about this, was there anything that shocked you that, that you learned that you didn't know? I found out that you could take your placenta and help plant a tree somehow. I did not know that either. I was gobsmacked. My jaw hit the floor, death drop, everything. I was like, how did you, you made a mango tree out of your placenta? I still am not really sure. Wow. That's, Isn't that crazy? It really is, and Women it makes me question fertile. eating mangoes again. <laughs> and you also talk about one of your first dates with Pete to go to the White House, and you saw the Obamas. Dating Pete, feel like an imposter. I do not belong in these spaces. And Pete's like, go up there, go, go say hi. I was like, I cannot say hi to the president and the first lady. And he encourages me until I finally start working my way through the crowd. And I'm reaching my arm over the guy in front of me to shake his hand. As my arm is extended, I feel President Obama's hand touch mine. And I turn around and I recoil. I don't know why. And then I realize mid-recoil that I am recoiling from the president of the United States. So I stop and I grabbed his pointer finger. <laughs> And then I just shook it so vigorously. I was like, Merry Christmas, Mr. President. And he, he looked at me and he goes, yes. <laughs> After seeing a post online about a complete stranger in need of a kidney, our next guest felt compelled to do something. And not only did she no donate her own kidney and save that stranger's life, but the two have since become best friends. I couldn't believe that a stranger wanted to do this for me. I mean, it's one thing if a family member wants to get tested for you. But someone that doesn't know anything about you, that feels compelled to want to save your life, is just, she's a miracle. You know, um, Sarah Hyland is a friend of mine, and she she had the same thing. You know that, right? Yes. She, she went through the whole thing. Sarah, are you still here? How do you feel when you hear stories like this? It's so, so beautiful. Altruistic donors are just the most amazing people on the entire planet, I think. This whole thing that's brought you together, it's just so, so, so beautiful. And thank you so much for 
being such an amazing human being and helping Aaron out, um, there are so many of us that are on dialysis and on a transplant, on a, on a waiting list. Thank you so much just for being so kind. Well, what's also cool is because of this, they started a, a, an organization to raise awareness for organ donation. I really wanted to tell people that if you can't be more by giving an organ, to just be more in this life, be more kind, be more loving, and then to just help people. Absolutely. And I, I don't know if you know this, but I have friends at Shutterfly, and I told them about Be More, and Shutterfly wants to help you create memories with this check. It's a check for $10,000. <laughs> That's so weird because I also have friends at Shutterfly and uh, they gave me a check for $10,000. Are you dating? Do you have a boyfriend? Uh, I have a type. Uh, they're between 60 and 80 is my sweet spot. Uh -huh. <laughs> so right now I'm in my Andrew Cuomo phase, but I'm almost at the tail end of that because when it's Andrew Cuomo came on the scene during COVID, I mean, that was just it's like everyone. bananas. Yes. Like the Incredible Hulk, you know? Mm -hmm. Like a big Italian meatball just coming up like, you better wear a mask. I'm like, I will wear a mask. <laughs> I do want to date. I, it's just very hard during COVID, you know? Right. You can't really go, I mean, but I sometimes, you know, I got to hook up and I definitely want to have sex again. You do? Yeah, I had a guy come over the other night and we talked for a little bit and when I was ready, I was like, okay, I could, you know, hook up with this guy. This could be a fun night. I just need to get some history, COVID history. I said, what is your COVID strategy? Like, how are you handling it? Safety measures? And he said, well, I wear a mask a lot, but I mean, I don't really believe it does anything. I was like, listen up, buddy. I go, are you a doctor? Are you a scientist? Only a white male privileged man would think that they know better than doctors and scientists. <laughs> so frustrating. So I said, you know, go home and think about what you did. <laughs> and then if you have a different approach next week, call me back and maybe we can make something happen. I see. I haven't heard from him since. I see. <laughs> It is time for a Wet n Wild new game where two virtual audience members are going to take the ride of their lives from the comfort of their own homes. Let's play Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. Here we go, Trent. This is the lucky one. Lucky throw. Right Going here. it! Woo! Oh. Let's talk about the book, and let's talk about what do you still argue about? The whole thing with the book is there, we disagree. We agree on the big things in life, but feel like we're, we're like this, right? Like that. Like, and, a, but on the, like, like, like a twirl. Like a twirl. You're in sync. Yeah. But on the small things, we couldn't disagree more on every little thing. Well, I just want to cut back to, you know, with Barbara and that being in the ICU, you know, 10 years ago, um, there was a moment when we were praying for normal. We were praying for the everyday. And to be here, I'm just like, it's a pinch me moment, honestly, Ellen, to be here with you 10 years later, after writing a book with my husband about normal, everyday things that couples fight over. You know, I don't take that for granted. And... Um, During COVID, everything's like amplified, right? I feel right. everyone's under the same roof for, for months upon end. So we think if you could bring light to the things, the stupid things you all disagree about, maybe your relationship could get stronger. 